every time I come in the kitchen, you in the kitchen, in the goddamn refrigerator. I sure am hungry. So John's episode is actually gonna be a thirty minute one. <laughs> Hey, I can talk because he decided to take an hour to get here. Bro, that old lady, man. <laughs> bro, you, he's a that bro, old lady, I, man. No, nah, I don't. I don't. Bro, fucking. Uh, it's all our, everybody's fault. You text me at nine o'clock on my way. No, I text you like at nine twenty, bro. This nigga texted <laughs> me. He texted me, text me at nine. He was like, "Oh shit, I just got up. You come through." That was like an hour ago. Bro. I'm just happy. <laughs> I was gonna be I'm just happy sleep. I can hear you, bro. Oh shit. I'm I'm you, practicing on that, bro. You talk so quiet. I'm practicing on that like crazy, bro. Uh, Do people tell you that a lot? Yeah, it's kind of. I won't say it gets frustrating. I mean, I guess it's kind of myself, cause like, bro, I never used to talk and sit in school. You know, I was just kept to myself. So, fucking um, recently it's just like being the person that I became and shit. I have to actually talk to a lot of people now, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I always yeah, thought it was bro. weird. You organized all these insta meets. Yeah, bro. and then you were like just. I'm yeah, just laid yeah, back yeah, so or just so quiet. Yeah. Bro, and it's like, that's why I got to that point, though, because, like, I had to orchestrate, like, 70 people, and I'm like, bro, nobody's listening to me. I'm soft-spoken. I'm like, you know, I'm not loud. It's just so people are just looking at me like, why am I listening to him, you know? Or I can't even hear him and shit, you yeah. know? So I feel like it's it's a part of my dark voice and shit, and I, I always thought of myself, like, I have a dark voice, and it's like, if I speak louder, it's like I'm demanding and shit, which I guess, I guess it has to be like that, you know, but fucking now I'm adjusting to actually talking to people and fucking speaking up and actually standing my ground and shit. Wait, so, so you said when when you talk loud, you, you feel like you have a demanding voice? Is it because of the tone of your voice? Yeah, personally, I feel like, like, I... If say for example like if I talk to you like a person to person and shit and then I start speaking louder I feel like I'm just like demanding and shit you know I don't mm. know why though I feel like it's just yeah, it could be like you. a personality yeah, thing yeah, bro. yeah that's how I feel like I have like it took me a while to like figure out how to like direct people because I felt like I was being fucking like you know bossy, bossy but it's really not that I guess you know welcome everybody to the morning dinner uh, hold on. <laughs> we can think- start oh I- are we going I think we're already we're going to start it. I think yeah, it's yeah. kind of tight. I think that was a good little conversation to start yeah, off yeah. the whole episode with. We got we on John's Instagram story. We got Chuck. Going we live. Got, uh, Lincoln oh. bio. Don't, so welcome don't. everybody to the morning dinner. Oh, this man's got the volume all uh, the way up, up right now. <laughs> hey, we post on his Instagram just for y'all uh, listening to the audio. Uh, on today's episode, we got John Perez or Von Varez. No, it's still John Perez. Okay, no. cool. <laughs> that, was one, that was one of the questions, by the way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, why, why is well, it Hold a on, hold um, on, hold bro. on. My name uh, is Keem. Keem. Okay, Andrew. And you this- sound exactly like Andrew. He said, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, Let me Andrew. speak. Bro, and then I, this I is my co-host, sister, Chuck. Bro. What up, y'all? Shout out to Andrew. Cuts. Oh, the homies. Uh, all right, look him And then over here in the, cor- in, the, in, the, in the red corner, we got our boy, John Perez. John Perez is a uh, photographer, creative... Uh, curator out here in Las Vegas does a lot of uh, photo work and uh, today we want to sit down and kind of talk to him about his background his past uh, his goals his ambitions and anything else he's got going on right now so do you want to give the people hey, a quick no, little intro before yourself? I start this is episode 25 right this is episode 25 bro oh We've shit been working it's actually 24 bro <laughs> oh, hell no. you better move <laughs> no fucking um uh John Perez my name shit bro honestly I feel like I'm just an artist I mean, fucking started as a photographer and just moved up, and now I'm still trying to figure out who I am. So I would just specialize it as an artist and shit, you know. Mm. How did so, you get into into the the art, the uh, the lifestyle of photography? Like, what was it that pushed you to pick up a camera? Man, honestly, uh, working at a pawn shop, bro, and picked up a camera for like twenty dollars, and then just started Ooh. just shooting, bro. Twenty dollars? What type of camera was Nikon, it? Nikon. Uh, my first Nikon D seven thousand. Ooh, for twenty dollars? Oh, well, it came just a body and shit, no battery or no battery, no battery. So just about twenty like, bucks. Is that's a good deal, though, right? right? I was like, that's a steal, that's bro. Crazy. You know I mean? yeah, I that's one thing. Is shout he out stole to that the, shit? No, I'm like, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> He's a Jew. <laughs> that's one thing I will say, man. Is pawn shops. Yo, if man. you know how to find, like, look, look through them. Yeah, it's legit. Like that, that's where I got majority of my cameras because that was my uh, my job for the last two years. So that's mm-hmm. where I got majority. Of Did you get a little bit of discount? Working there or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro. Oh, that's tight. It's basically what you paid for it. What we paid for it and shit, you know. Oh, so, that's tight. Okay, so you get it. Like, I got, I got mine now, which with the one I'm working on, which is the Canon 70, for 200, which is fucking wow. Still a steal. Bro. You got it bro. for 200 bucks. Damn, wow. I remember when they first came out, bro. Bro, yeah, that's I remember crazy. when it still costed over a thousand. Mm-hmm. Bro, yeah, 
Or is it the seventies not full frame, is it? No, it's crop no, sensor. No, no, no. Yeah, that's what's up. Are you rocking cannon lenses on it? Yeah, yeah. Nice. I'm barely, I'm barely getting to that whole field, man. Cause fucking, I won't say I took photography seriously, but this is the first year that I actually took it like, like, basically independent and shit. You know, I quit my job. I did all that just to fucking try to pursue whatever it is that this is gonna be. You know, cause like back back when I was like younger, bro, like I was troubled and shit, always getting locked up and fucking. Just on Locked drugs up like going like to jail? That. Juvie and jail, bro. I'm not proud to say it, but you know, it probably made me the person that I am now, you know. But fucking um shit, man. That's but, good, man. A lot of people stay in that yeah, loop, man. Man, man I, I ran into a few people recently and they're still in that same mindset, you know? And it, it sucks, man. Cause like we're growing up and it just feels like some people are just stuck in that state of mind. Why do you think that? I don't know, man. I mean it could be drugs, it could be just that lifestyle that they like. You know, it's, it's like crazy. Like it's man. The adrenaline rush to yeah, like man. Do con yeah. or shit or whatever. Yeah, thug shit. Damn, that's such a contrast, bro. I never even been to the, the, the tension. <laughs> <laughs> you got scared. Bro, to why, say you the always, why you always calling me out, bro? Yeah. You always calling me out. No, that ain't cool, no. man. Because no, I said Dick Lexus, bro. Yeah, Chill. Dick, Dick, Lexus. <laughs> Dick Lexus. We we all we, we always mess up our words and we call each other out. That's like he could he couldn't say the he couldn't say dyslexia one of the last episodes. Yeah, yeah. He was like Dick. What was that word? Dick Dick's Lex. I said Dick yeah. Lexus. I was like, I, I remember shit, yesterday. Bro. Yesterday somebody pointed me out on something like that too. I said decorate. That's how you say decorate, right? Decorate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Dec decorate, not decorate. I said, I said some dec decorate. I was decorate. Like, decorate. decorate. I was like, bro, like decor. That's you give a I mean, uh, my, what is my, the homegirl uh, Christina? She said. Baton. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. She's like, I pressed that baton. You know, you, you know, see Flyaway on yeah, Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. We had her on here. Uh, it was last week. Last, last Friday, episode, right? Yeah, yeah. Damn, it's already been a week. Yeah, oh, bro. you guys have hello people. You guys have released yeah. Yeah, That's bro. Dope, bro. We're trying to dominate the, the podcast, audio's bro. out. Yeah, yeah, audio's already All out. Time, yeah. But the audio comes out the next day usually. But she she said a word. She was she, she was she was like getting deep with her like you know uh, psychology and everything. And she was like button or what should we say button 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 she said button and i was like whoa, whoa cut you off real quick <laughs> yeah he's like he's like <laughs> it's, it's button <laughs> it's button no that's dope man because i remember when you told me when you guys were going to start it and just to see how the growth is you know it's very inspiring bro oh, yeah. very inspiring man hey so real quick looking at your instagram what's a muse bro oh man this is the funniest thing because I was like, I'm gonna come in here and talk hella shit, but I'd rather be positive, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny, man, because I feel like I won't say I started these terms, but these terms were basically um, terms that I kind of like originated from, like people or inspirations, other photographers and stuff that use it. Uh, I feel like Muse is just like a creative female, you know, mm -hmm. like basically like I, I won't say all these girls are models or all these girls that I shoot are models because most of them have never shot or fucking, you know, they're not models. They're not signed to an agency, you know. So I feel like I refer to every girl as a muse because basically she's a creative person. Like she has a nine to five or she has a career. It's just so, you know, that's how I started referring. And it's funny because like now I see everybody use it. I'm not saying that I started. Yeah, it, no, you like, know what? I'm going to be honest, though. The first time that I heard the word muse now, mind you, I hadn't been in the photography community much, you know, before yeah, 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 before yeah. until I met you, actually. Yeah, because you, really... said, you said you started uh, portraits and stuff recently, yeah. right? I, I started doing portraits stuff, when so. I first met you at that first Insta meet. That was the first time, and Chuck can attest to this, because I, I had done, like, photo, photos here and there for, like, clients, but I yeah, never yeah, really yeah. did, like, or for family, but I never really did, like, street portraits or studio portraits. I never really took the time to, to do that until yeah. I saw, like, you were doing the whole culture thing out here with you know, teaching people uh, photography and things like that. And that's what got me started. But I never saw anybody use the word muse before. Before, Yeah, you. yeah, it's crazy. So I'm, I, you should, I, I you won't should take, copyright I'm, that, bro. Nah, I mean, I, I, I seen a lot of people use it, like New York, Cali, shit like that, you know, but never really anybody from here, which is it's dope to see that a lot of people are using it. But Also, they, you stole it. No. I'm not, <laughs> nobody <laughs> was using it here. So. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, you just got to use it proper, man. Not, I won't say not everybody's a muse, but... Just use it properly, man. Mm. You know what I mean, I love muses, man. Have you created any words, Chuck? It's not a word I created. Oh no, he he, dude, they create a word. I create smank these. <laughs> no, that was... smank these. <laughs> smank you these. You just throw the T H I E S on everything. These funny. Smank these. That's just yeah. crazy. I'll tell you what it means after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you can pretty much like put two and two awesome. together. Bringing it back home, how do you think? Uh, how do you think? social media has has changed the world of 
of photography and photographers do you think it's like desensitized people to the idea of what a photographer is like do you think the market is like too saturated and that makes it hard to make it as a photographer what are your thoughts i feel like it's kind of both man i mean i've taken it to the point that i won't say i kind of got to myself but uh, i feel like a lot of people kind of judge people off the followers and the likes and shit like that you know i feel like that's now our generation's currency which is like i have right now i have a lot of stuff i haven't released just for i won't say that fact just because i'm working on trying to actually do the website and shit you know mm -hmm. but um i don't know man everybody's gonna take it different i i feel like it's it's a good platform because it's connected me with a lot of people to this day and shit you know but other than that man i i hate that comparison i hate that algorithm i hate that fucking you know mm -hmm. i hate that algorithm bro you have, to, you, have to, you have to post at a random time, at a right time, and everybody's going to see it. Sometimes you might post the best work you think, and then nobody shows love. I'll give, I'll give you, you know? my thoughts on it, bro. <clears throat> I think people should forget about the algorithm. Yeah, no, people I think should people just should forget get out about there. posting. People should just create, yeah. period. Yeah. But should you they? Know? They should. I don't know, man. Because if you want to become an Instagram influencer, don't you want to hit the most highest numbers? Bro, yeah, if you want to become an Instagram influencer, you just got to take pictures of booty. Okay. Like literally, yeah, just yeah. every photo, naked chick. <laughs> that's where the attention is, man. Yeah, like you know, sucks, it's a uh, sex. Sells, I won't though. knock. I won't knock yeah. the hustle, but Never. uh, but there's. I mean, there's photographers out there who know uh, who understand the game. Yeah. They know what gets the most amount of likes. Like when I post a photo of a of a guy, yeah, or a girl, the guy will get half the likes, yeah, or half yeah, the yeah. attention. You know what I mean? It's just it's just human nature. Like people people see like a pretty girl and they're like, oh fuck, mm -hmm. I don't even know who's posting this, but double, double tap, tap like yeah. you know. It just sucks, man, because like it got to me at that point too, because I felt like I was just shooting women, I was just shooting females to that point that I felt like I was just getting boxed in, you know. So that's why I started trying to expand myself to shooting males, shooting landscape, shooting just anything I could actually do, you know. But fucking that that makes a good point because I seen a lot of people just shoot women, sex mm -hmm. sales, you know. If you shoot women. Yeah, people are gonna fuck with it regardless. But I'm not trying to get boxed into that. You know, I love shooting females, but man, I know I could do so much more. It's tricky, man, because like, let's say you're a, let's say you're a photographer who only shoots booty, right? If their whole your whole feed is just you know butt shots and all that stuff, do you think somebody would hire you to do anything else outside of butt shots? No, I mean, but you gotta have that. I think you gotta have that clientele with women. You gotta just strictly shoot women, strictly shoot strippers. Not to say in a bad way, but yeah. strictly <laughs> shoot people that are gonna pay that to do that. Because mm -hmm. I feel like I was shooting females to that point, and being that this is my first year independent, I won't say I was struggling, but I'm a struggling artist at the moment. So shooting females was just like it was more of a practice and kind of my non-priority thing. But I was making more money off events, man. Still to this day, my highest paid thing was a quinceanera, bro. Like, yeah, I'm like, that well, that's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing, you know? and we, we we've talked about this like off camera. Is a <clears throat> well, we actually mentioned that on the podcast a couple times. What pretty girls don't pay for photo shoots, like you know what I mean? Like yeah. some, like and some. It okay, depends. so yeah, I won't put them all into a box. Yeah, yeah, yeah some, But some. the majority, like, yeah. you know, let's say you're you're a beautiful woman, you've got five six thousand followers, and you've got your little cloud, you've got your hype about you. You're realistically in Vegas with how many photographers are out there yeah. willing to shoot you yeah. on their six thousand dollar cameras with their ten thousand dollar lenses for free to build a portfolio? Like the competition just kind of like you know what I mean? Like yeah. now, mind you, if you have a certain you know style about your work, then they may hit you up and and stuff like that. Because I I still have people that hit me up, but then you know I send them my rate and they're like, I've got twenty thousand followers. Um, why would I yeah. have to pay? You know what I mean? Like it's just a little. It's, it's getting to that point, man, because I feel like, I won't say I got annoyed, but I kind of it kind of hit me, man, when, like, I was shooting, like, actively. I was shooting, like, the whole week straight, and then they would hit me up, like, two or three days later, like, how are the pics looking? I'm like, I haven't even touched the pictures, to be honest. You know, it's like they hit you up because a lot of people are eager to post or eager to, I don't know what it is, but they're eager to post, man. And it's like, I got to the point that I'm like, are you shooting? Well, me, asking photographers mainly, like, are you shooting to post or are you shooting to, you know? Like, build yourself. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are shooting just for Instagram now, man. And it's just, I won't say it's unfortunate, but it's losing that, that value of why you're doing this in the beginning, mm -hmm. you know? Why yeah, you doing, 100%. Yeah, why are you doing it for Instagram or are you doing it for something else, you know? Like, at first, I won't say I did it for Instagram, but I felt like 
that was my main platform. So obviously I was posting on a day to day base, but then I was like, bro, I'm shooting way too much and I'm not releasing enough, you know, which that's that's the point that I wanted to get at. But it's like now it's, it's trying to find what I actually can do with this, you know? Yeah. And yeah. I feel like that's where I kind of like fell into. Like I was like, you know, I'm doing offense and shit and all that. And people are like, oh, why don't you like talk about your days and Instagram? I'm like, to be honest, bro, it's not what I'm truly yeah. loving to do. Like I don't like I, I love it. It's cool. It's chill. But yeah. it's not like my main thing i want to do like i'm not like oh i'm so hyped you know what i mean yeah, like i haven't yeah. really and we, we've talked about this multiple times on multiple uh podcasts but i i feel like i'm still truly finding myself yeah creatively man. yeah and we've talked about this like it's just finding your true creativeness yeah. like knowing exactly what you want to do and well, it feel, also comes down to a fact that some people like it's kind of like the whole uh how you'll see like like crappy photography businesses all over the place right you'll find like somebody like you'll find photo studios around like in any city any any state in the united states not particular vegas any city any state new york whatever and you'll see a uh popping photography studio or a popping business it doesn't have to be photography man it could be like making donuts or whatever it is right uh -huh. but the and, the and then you go in there you're like oh the photos are not that good oh the 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 donuts were not that good it's like yeah that place is all right right uh -huh. but why do they continue to stay in business because they understand business they understand yeah, the game they they think it's fun marketing they, they understand like they have they have they got a high or some kind of adrenaline rush when they're creating when they're starting their business and they're, and they're trying to thrive right yeah. as opposed to somebody who's a who's like a more of a reserved artist and they're like oh well i'm kind of shy i don't really want to talk that much and and then it gets harder for them to, to 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 get to the top because their personality is not allowing them to seek through other avenues of business outside of just the art part, right? right. They're more focused on creating and build, building themselves as a brand, or like you know, and, and people just want to, you know, people who understand the business, they get to the top faster. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's just the whole thing. I I feel like you know, do what what feels best for you. You know what I mean? But. Yeah, if you if you do want to make it big, you need to know the marketing and business yeah, side of things. That's, like that's, that's man. you could be ignorant and say, "No, nah, I'm gonna be a starving artist," mm -hmm. but I promise you, you won't make that much money. Yeah, you know, and you or you might, you might, you might, you might be fine, one out of the ways, yeah. billion. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? To actually make it doing what you truly love, but a lot of people, yeah, it's good to market yourself, good to network, good to do all that. You can't yeah. can't be ignorant to that. It's, but John, you did a because I remember a while ago you did like a whole month of portraits right like back to back like every day or something uh for my i think this year i did it for uh my birth month on april but it was like a just like a challenge just basically just shooting specific things a day and stuff i was gonna do uh i did it recently but i was losing color man i was trying to do 30 days shooting straight black and white mm. and then i was like at day i was like at 15 20 and i was like yo i'm losing the the feel of color and shit and i don't want to lose that but fucking I, I was talking to a few people about it and they're like shooting black and white is like a genius idea because you're finding out like you're fucking figuring out a lot of stuff and i'm like yo like i did this just just out of curiosity and shit you know so mm -hmm. i mean just i feel like i'm just stepping out of my own comfort zone now and it's just been either opening doors or just like teaching me something you know so yeah it's it's a powerful thing man i mean mm -hmm. I, I've never expected to be in this position. I'm not saying I'm in any position, but like even yesterday at the meet, man, it's like I met a few people and they're like, you, I look up to your work or I'm inspired by your work. And I'm like, yo, I'm just literally just finding inspiration in myself. So finding inspirations in others, I feel like is a very powerful thing, man. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I look at other people as inspire, inspiration other than competition, you know, because like I tried competition in the beginning and people took it wrong. I mean, I would take it wrong too, man. I'm I'm a bit egotistic at times, but I can take competition and lose and just move on forward and shit, you know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, just just I feel like you just gotta find inspiration, man. Like I find inspiration in you guys, what you guys do. Like videos is my next thing, bro. Like I'm done shooting portraits <laughs> at the end of this year, bro. Like well, at the end of this year, yeah. Oh snap! What are you gonna do with that portrait vibe account? <laughs> oh man, that shit. Oh man, hold on, first shooting? of all, let's 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 hit that, bro. Yeah. Why why do you why did you? You switched from, uh, you used to be at Portrait Vibe on yeah, Instagram, yeah, yeah, and now yeah, you're yeah. at Von Varez. Uh, First of all, your name's John Perez. Why, yeah. why the Vs? Look, uh, all right, Portrait Vibe, bro, like, when I first started photography, it was just a, a name that I needed for Instagram, basically, you know, like a photographer name. And, uh, I would say like the first six months, first year, like I started getting tagged in, in pages, you know, since there's like Portrait Page, Pursuit of Portraits and stuff like that. It started building up and I started, uh, 
getting like five to 20 tags a day. And then um, just mentally, man, I just decided to men turn that into like a portrait feature page. Uh, as soon as I reached the hashtags, like my hashtags portrait vibe, it reached like over my following, which was like when I had like two, three thousand, it passed that, surpassed that. And then I started doing the features. But then I started posting my work and feature page and feature uh, things. And then a lot of people were complimenting the work. They were like, I like this picture, like in person. And I was like, that's dope, but that's not my picture. You know, that's a feature. So then uh, recently, like since I quit my job and stuff, I was still pursuing that. But then it's like, where am I going to put my personal work? You know, so switching the Von Perez, John Perez is a typical name. So it was already taken. The V's is just. It's, I, I won't say it's my lucky letter, but it's just something that I've been using a lot, like Vibe, Vegas, you know, just like using the Von Vares just made like, it's just randomly, bro. Like one day I was just like, let me see if this ad name is taken, you know, yeah. and, it, and it wasn't taken. So I just did that and literally had to make a new page for Portrait Vibe and turn that into a Portrait Feature page, man. So now it's like, I checked it yesterday, it's like at 6,400. I'm like, bro, like I get tagged from people here like crazy, but... Like, it, it's a blessing to see that Portrait Vibe is, is, like, all over now. So, it's like, I've seen some people use it in the Philippines and Paris and shit. And I'm like, mm -hmm. bro, like, I'm, That's in, tight. I'm in Vegas, bro. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like, but Portrait Vibes is bigger. Not to talk shit, but they're bigger. They're, like, 10 Ks, 10-something. But, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not sure what it's going to become. But now, it's just, like, it's going to be a feature page. And just Von Vrez is going to be just my personal, personal, you know. Just actually turning that into a business is why I changed it. And trying to see what I can do with Portrait Vibe and still uh, maneuver instant meet and stuff like that. So, Bon mm. Rez is the new new me, I guess you can say. Where Sorry. Where are you originally from, bro? Here, bro. You're from Vegas. Mm -hmm. You're born and raised in Vegas. UMC. Yeah. Damn, people. I didn't, bro. I th I thought that was rare to happen because a couple of years ago when I was asking people, like I didn't know anybody that was born and raised. Like Chuck was Chuck and my sister, are, like the only two that I knew. Yeah, bro. It's and then hard we keep having people on this podcast. They're like, oh yeah, I was born here. Yeah, you know, native, or yeah. I moved here when I was like one, you know. Yeah, so they're basically like raised out here, you know. But yeah, they were, they were raised out here when they were smaller, but I was born and raised here, man. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of people say of a lot of people say you can't uh you can't live in Vegas. Like Vegas is not a yeah. city you live in, right? That that too, and I've been getting a lot. You can't make it out of Vegas. And, uh, you're gonna make it out of your city yeah. though. I yeah. think that's for anybody yeah. though. Yeah. Anybody in their own city can't make I it out of city. I I disagree with that. You yeah. made it in your own city? No. We I didn't. To, I didn't. Going to, but I'm we're saying, going if you want to make it anywhere, you got to make it in your hometown first, yeah, right? Man. No, I, 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 you don't I, think so? No, I think I like. I what do you mean? Like, as in, like you you become big because of Vegas? You of no, course, no, like I'm Vegas saying, is your starting ground. No one's gonna look at, like, for example, let's just use a uh, you know a a a rapper for instance, mm -hmm. right? No one's gonna no one no one as a rapper is gonna make it because they're a Vegas rapper. Like someone has to make it from Vegas. To be able to to make it anywhere else. Yeah. Like, oh, of I feel, course. Like, you know like, what I mean? Like I'm talking about though. Like they're not they're not selling. You don't sell out arenas in your own city right away. Mm -hmm. Oh no. That's what I'm talking about. Well, but I that's don't know. not do making you, it. Do you? Do you think do Magic you? did it? <laughs> And Magic yeah, would and, be like and, and the Arizona, only one I could yeah, really Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Well, I, yeah, Magic was was doing his but thing. But do you think you might, maybe I mean, he was popping I don't in know. LA? I like you to know what I mean? Podcast and ask him actually. Because that's what <laughs> I, I'm just saying. Like, and it's not hating your own city or anything, but I think people appreciate you. When they don't see you around all the time, I think Dizzy gets way more love in a lot of other places. I could you know be, what I mean? Could be, yeah. Because I've seen shows out yeah. here, and I'm just like, nobody. yeah. And this is no disrespect it, to anybody. Well, that's that's one of the things about Vegas, bro. Is we have some of the biggest venues when it comes to like MGM, uh, uh, all these casinos that have yeah, their bro. own, right? And the biggest things come to Vegas that when you're a local trying to make it, everybody overlooks you because why would I go spend? ten dollars to go see you at bunkhouse when i can spend 30 and go see this famous person at the engine or you know what i mean like that, yeah, that yeah. kind of that kind of comparison comes into place where as opposed to somebody who lives in a small town my dude got the the, the, <laughs> the alarm <on. laughs> when you got somebody who comes from a small town then it's like uh they have nobody to compete with because there's nobody big coming to their town right like if you're from some place in arkansas and you're trying to make it as an artist or something you're you have more of a chance of reaching your audience mm -hmm. because there's no distractions there here in vegas everybody comes to vegas from all over the world though you got all these uh big artists performing at these at these joints you know what mm -hmm. i mean so yeah it's either that or support man i feel like support is the biggest thing now like in that situation like even saying that you can't make it out of vegas like People that don't know you or people that are out of state might support you more than people from your own city, you know, mm -hmm. which is very unfortunate to see, you know, to see because, like, they'll support you, like, I would say socially and then when it comes to, like, actually 
purchasing something or visiting you at a show or something like that as an artist and shit, I feel like they won't do it, you know? I'm I'm not saying there's a reason why, but that that's why I feel like I've I've been getting that a lot this year. Like I don't think I don't think I can make it out of Vegas. I don't think you know, it, and it's true because like for artists, I feel like you know, like Los Angeles or like Cali or like New York has more opportunity because that's that's I mean that's where most of the stuff happens and shit. Mm-hmm. But I feel like I feel like Vegas is bound to grow, man. I'm, I feel like Vegas. is Oh bound yeah, to grow, it's so baby, bro. It's it's, it's bound like to just grow, being man. in like the music scene and like growing from that culture and just seeing it over the years. Yeah, and then finally being in it and doing shows and whatnot. Like it's it still has so much to yeah. grow compared to so many other places. Like even Reno is like killing yeah, vegas you know bro. and like people talk shit about reno but and there's yeah, a lot of other places even like when, like like the little towns and like kansas and stuff yeah like they're yeah, killing yeah. it too culture wise well then yeah. let me ask you this john what do you think has to change for yeah. for for there to be a better culture in vegas or do you think that's even possible i mean that that is possible bro because like doing that whole instrument stuff I, i've never expected to get that much support and seeing that i have that much support i feel like we just need support man like more support more mutual support like more uh offline interactions more you know just like basically more support bro like not to say in a bad way or mention support so much but i feel like i supported anybody who supported me and if they don't then you know i still support the movement you, know? you think it's just because people are lazy or it's ego or both. I think both, man. Yeah. It sucks, man. But, I mean, sooner or later, man, I feel like the next few years it's just going to grow and then people will adjust, man. I mean, people do, will adjust. Do you, do you think, and this is a question for both of you guys, actually, you guys think competition drives culture? Uh, depending yeah. on how you look at it, I mean. I hope so. I hope it's yeah. good competition. Like, something well, the, the, where, like, oh, um, I don't know. At the same time, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, because like that—that that brings the egotistic again. People uh, can compete, but then if they lose, they they might look at you different. They might, you know, just their whole mood changes and shit. But I mean, if you can take light competition, we can compete. Like, say, say for example, like I look at your videos, like I want to do better than this, so I'm gonna compete with you. But I, I'm still inspired by it. You know? Yeah, so, exactly. So you know, I mean, it just depends how you look at it, I guess. I mean, yeah. Mm-hmm. The the reason I say is because like I, I don't know. I think of like movies that i watched like like step, what's it called step up the the the, the dancing movie <laughs> the dancing bro one. <laughs> and uh and there's always like there's always like this group of kids and like oh hey man you're gonna go down to that uh competition downtown or whatever or whatever the the thing is and then everybody dances and everybody does their thing and it's like a bonding experience but it's also competition but it's the it's also they look forward to it because there's like a there's like a big grand prize or something right yeah, yeah so it's yeah. almost like an incentive for people to come and meet up and hang out and shoot the shit right I feel like it could be a good thing, depending on, once again, how egotistical most people are. Yeah. And I wouldn't say Vegas is bad. Like, can, I really don't you, know. Can you imagine? And this is, this Thanks is, for cutting me off. It's incentive. Sorry, bro. <laughs> but I, I had an idea and I had to go, yeah. I had to go up on it. Go. But what if you gave away, like, a, imagine if you gave away, like, a 1DX, like Canon 1DX Mark II every time there was a portrait meetup. Yeah. Can you people, imagine people the amount of turn up, up right? People are going to show up. I mean. Can you imagine, yeah. though? Like, it, I mean, having thousands of people there. That, that's and what if we, you that's had what the, we want to get to, like actually getting reaching out to companies or get sponsorships you know, and whatnot. Yeah, I for sure, I think yeah. I could do it. You yeah. know what I mean, a yeah. thousand percent. And, and how that I mean, start? That, uh, man, that's just funny because like everything for me, I would say started like three years ago, bro. Like I had my son, I had I started photography, bro, and like uh, I, it was literally like a birthday gift that I saw, like basically Cali and New York and stuff do basically local meetups and stuff, and then I went to one. Uh, here but it was uh from la so then seeing that was inspiring so i did it for my birthday in april and just basically just blasted out an event and the flyer and stuff and i had we had like roughly like 60 70 people that's crazy so it's like it's it's crazy to see that actually happen and ever since then like i didn't do anything till uh the fall and then it just started growing from there you know so i mean it it, it kind of confused me this year because like a lot of people kept asking what is this to me or what is this and it's like to me I'm I'm not really specifying that it's something specific you know it's just like it's it's just a local meetup for creatives and we just get it's super dope I haven't been to one yet because I'm but a you, piece you, of you, shit you but, always um, working bro <laughs> I definitely and it's funny hey talking about that it's funny because I run into Chuck in the most randomest spots man yeah the we most always randomest be. spots like well, what do you mean random like like bro, Denny's like, on Craig no, and <laughs> I'm telling you like. Uh, 
Last time I saw him, I remember uh, I was walking. Sapphire. Yeah, I was walking down. Uh, what is that? Industrial, right? Yeah. Yeah, I was walking down. Or Sammy Industrial. Davis Jr. Oh now. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was walking down, and then I was literally just looking, and the homie was going back inside the, his job. <laughs> and like, Bro, what the fuck? You know? Wait, did you guys meet before I met you, or what, did I meet you first? No, um, that, that's what I was thinking about last time. Damn. Um, because I think. I think it was for, I don't know if it was for Newly for something, but I think we talked on the phone previously before we even met in person about uh, how to host something with, uh, I think it was Newly for it was something else, bro. But I remember it was talking to you, but then I didn't meet him in person until like after all this. Yeah, I can't even remember. Fuck. It was, it was years ago. Bro. Yeah, it was like for three sure years. years. Because I remember, I remember I was uh, talking on the phone and then fucking somebody called me. And I remember it's, it was either Chuck or it was somebody that was running with the uh, dispensaries, but it was to host something there or mm-hmm. to try to get creative. But that was like years ago. Bro. Was that for Acres or New Leaf? I, I, it's probably either or, bro. But I remember, oh, okay. I remember fucking actually trying to do something like creative wise. I don't think it was just to me because that's when I started that. But it was trying to see. I think it was. I won't say for a job, but it was like photography related and shit, you know. And then I don't think I met him till afterwards, after when we met. But it's funny because I run into him in the random spots because I remember uh, it hit me, bro, when you told me, like, I take little advice and little shit, mm-hmm. like, seriously as shit. And I remember, like, uh, when I saw you at the Dizzy Show at Institution, yeah. we had, like, the most genuine, con- oh, yeah, yeah, shortest yeah, conversation, sure. bro. Like, literally, we were just, I was just shooting there and then, fucking, we had that conversation, bro. And when you told me, it hit me, like, fucking, um, I posted on my on my post, dog. It was fucking, uh, when you said the first million is always going to be the hardest. Oh, yeah, for sure. Know, but... Sure. Well, whatever it is, I hope you find it when you, when you, you know, when basically when you said that, it was just, it just hit me, bro. Like, all of us got to find that million, dog. It's oh, going to be yeah, the hardest shit sure, ever, man. bro. The first million is going to be the hardest, but after that, I mean, you're just going to yeah. glide and shit. Bro, you know? it's, it's just how the game works. You know? It sucks, man. I mean, it's, I'm not going to say it's hard to make it out of here, but we're going to find a way, bro. Like, oh, for I sure. I feel like we got to find I think, it. like, and it's only going to be a certain amount of us, and it's not saying it in a negative <clears> way because yeah, you got business yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got whatever, but I feel like we all have like a really creative spark. I feel, you know, I might be wrong. No, I, might, think we should do I might be a bum. I think we should, we, we should get a space downtown, bro. Get hey. A creative space. We do podcasting out of there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We do, we do stripper dance. Uh, I already uh, bought a warehouse. Sh- sh- uh, what's it called? Stripper classes. <laughs> For anybody who wants to learn, learn how to be a stripper, all that stuff, bro. Bro. Yeah. I'm with it. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to do that at the end of the year, bro. I mean, there's already hella studios and shit, but if I can use Portrait Vibe and Instamit as a resource and shit, like, mm-hmm. that's that's my next move, trying to see if I can get a space just for all that. Because, like you said, there's hella venues here, man, but it's just kind of hard to orchestrate something different. I'm trying to work on different stuff other than regular events, which is people performing, drinking, shit like that, you know? So Yeah. I want more, like, a... Uh Oh, workshops, bro. Speaking of that, bro, I'm proud to say I haven't drank like in five months, bro. Oh, so. good shit. You haven't drank in five months? No alcohol. Damn. Bro, me too. Yeah. Me too. Since, since yeah. March. I haven't drank since, since yesterday. Wait, oh, March. Hey, hey. March, <laughs> January, or March, January? Woo. March, April, May, June, bro. July, August, <laughs> September. Yeah, it's been six months for me. That's good, bro. Yeah. I don't I mean, have a problem, but I just yeah, stopped. Yeah, yeah, Randomly yeah. stopped. I was like, eh, I don't, don't yeah, want to Yeah, I stopped for my birthday. I was like, I randomly do shit on my birthdays now, bro. Like, Wait, are you 25 right now? Yeah. That's, that's why you wanted the 25th episode. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, bro. I won't say I take it as a lucky number. Like, I, I try to take the year and try to see if I can do the most with it. You know, like, I'm releasing I'm releasing a few things. And I'm only going to, like, I'm releasing that book, a book, like a black and white book. And it's only going to be 25 copies and 25 pages. So, I'm not saying I'm taking 25 as a lucky number or saying I'm going to make it at 25. But I like to just... Mm-hmm. you know stay consistent with that like last uh fucking when i was 24 i did uh, a few things 24 hours you know 24k you know just random shit bro just random creative shit, what's uh know? 24k was that 24k gold you know like pure, oh, okay being oh, pure okay. and shit you know nice but it, i did uh pictures that were like golden hour and that's what i refer 24k like just pure gold and shit you know that's just crazy man i mean even just being here now it's crazy i mean i feel like it's a blessing just to just to be alive and shit. Like this is random, bro. But like I was talking to my son because he talks now and shit, right? Yeah. But fucking, I was talking to my son, or he was just we we're randomly playing, bro. And it just I've been living off that ever since then, and it's been like a week or two. Um, it was, randomly, bro, he was just like, "Dad, I'm happy," and I'm like, "Bro, it's crazy. Oh, that's it's trippy. crazy, bro. It's crazy because like this is just random." He said that, and it just it hit me, dog, because like us as as grownups, we just we're we're 
we can find happiness, but I feel like we're just either overworking, stressed, or worried about bills and shit. And that's the part of growing up, you know. But in the end, I feel like I just got to be thankful just to be here. You know what I mean? Like That's real talk, man. I think that's why a lot of people are searching for financial freedom, yeah. bro, because because deep within – everybody's still a kid yeah they're still they want to be able to wake up at one in the afternoon and then go down to the park and or go down to the pool and spend you know eat some barbecue or something and they want to chill they want to relax they want to have that carefree that they had when they were kids right right a lot of us are still chasing that man yeah Yeah. i'd love to to not have to worry about working yeah you know wake up and just like all all the time my mind is like i want to create today yeah right like i want to make something new i want to hang out with some friends like maybe go downtown or something and chill not have to worry about oh i gotta be at this office doing this one yeah, thing man. you know it's the dream that, that that kind of thing no but i mean i feel like we still we still can pursue happiness i mean i think we're all still in that process you know i feel like we're still building ourselves creating ourselves and trying to find happiness but i feel like a, a big part of that is like positivity like if somebody brushes like negative energy is gonna brush on you and shit you oh, know 100%. Yeah. so fucking now it's just like just i try to remain positive man i mean even being in the lowest of my lows i'm like a lot of people are like you look happy i'm like you know i'm just trying to find that you know I'm, mm-hmm. I, I can't say 100 percent that i'm happy but i'm just honestly i'm happy to be here you know yeah what I mean? have you ever seen that movie the pursuit of happiness yeah that's just crazy by man. will smith that's just crazy. It's super deep because that's like most hey, he, he brought up a good point in that movie he's like how, it's like how do they know how do they know to put the pursuit of happiness you know so when some people never really attain it but how do they know to put pursuit of happiness instead of like achieving it right yeah, yeah interesting crazy, open my yeah. open my mind when i read that but uh, who, who's, who's one of your biggest inspirations uh do you have any inspirations in photography or is it everybody <laughs> well i mean personally a mm-hmm. lot of people man i mean I, well, I would imagine your son being your biggest inspiration. Yeah, for now, man. I mean, he's he's my biggest inspiration for now. But I feel like uh, I, I look up to a lot of people, man. I mean, either they shoot just uh, women and it's inspiring to shoot that type of stuff or like landscapes and shit like that. But I mean, I feel like I look inspiration in everybody, bro. Like, That's tight. Yeah, like at least everybody, man. I can't. I don't want to name specific people because that would be a long ass list, bro. But yeah. Everybody, bro. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like every time, every time I see somebody... Uh, post on on the gram it it, it it's kind of like it hypes me up a little bit yeah, yeah but then yeah. at the same time i also have these i i personally have these photographers that i look at uh their work they're not even in vegas like some of them are like in syria or like yeah, in yeah, lebanon yeah, or something like completely yeah. outside of the world and just seeing their photography and the way they shoot shots yeah. it's like dude you're, it's completely different than somebody who lives in vegas right like yeah. your style is just completely it's like music too you yeah, know how music's bro. completely yeah. different in different yeah. cultures and shit and that's what's like, crazy about that like music anything like we can step in say photography for example we can step in with the same camera we're not going to shoot the same stuff you know mm-hmm. that's 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 a blessing about actually that that culture and shit like not creating the same thing but still having the same object and shit you know mm-hmm. that's crazy bro yeah that's just crazy i agree man do you have any favorite spots in Vegas to go get food? Uh, and I'm not just asking because we're starving right now. <laughs> By the way, for anybody anybody who's tuning in right now, we uh we started this podcast at like 10 in the morning, 10, uh, 11 o'clock. We haven't eaten breakfast yet. We Shit, I came here for breakfast, bro. Morning dinner. Oh, yeah. You did say I was going to have to make you some extra something, huh? No, I had some. <laughs> some snacks. But you would have brought some, bro. Yeah, some snacks. I should have brought some, some Denny's in that Uber that took you two hours to get bro. here. <laughs> I, I was, asked, no, I was no, asking Chuck. I was like, bro, where's he driving from? He's driving from he said, LA. He said, I didn't know it was Labor Day. I thought you were talking about traffic. <laughs> I took a photo of the <laughs> green ass like Google map traffic. He went, on Google, traffic. he went on Google <laughs> Maps, looked up traffic, and it was all green, bro. <laughs> this is I died. No, it's, it's the craziest <laughs> shit, bro. Like I don't mean to talk shit on anybody, bro, but I, I've done a lot of stuff, and I had I had nothing like fucking either driving, you know, driving to certain locations or just like finding routes and shit. Like I did a lot, bro, with nothing. So I'm just I'm very anxious. I'm very patient now to actually get the stuff that i need to actually put me in that in a better position and shit you know mm-hmm. so fucking it's crazy bro like i've done a lot with nothing bro like, i, I like not, that not mentality say, man i didn't even say it like that bro but i've done a lot with nothing bro so you take the bus and everything is that what we're talking about or no, both bro like say like the shoots and stuff i, I take the bus bro oh. i'm not saying because you know that kim with the girl she was like i take the bus everywhere i was like damn that's crazy yeah, yeah. No, she's dope bro. like See, that, and, and, I feel, and i feel like I like like, like i take that for granted bro because like i've never rode the bus in my entire life no, sure, bro. it's an experience bro. but well, you've bought, never no nah, i bought a bucket though so no, i've always had bucket ass cars because i was like i don't like as people. long as it gets you to point a bro how much you pay for your car chuck uh with insurance money 
or 400 bucks that bro. black one out there Word? Yeah, yeah bro yeah. I, I, I don't want to spend money no more so i was like i'm gonna be debt free so yeah, i bought a shitty ass yeah. car it works as AC. long as it gets you as long as it gets you places bro yeah, yeah. that's just crazy bro don't drive around debt you said don't drive around Ooh. flossing yeah don't drive around flossing with stuff and shit. You know? Yeah, don't get don't get a forerunner, guys. Yeah, <laughs> it's just funny, man. <laughs> no, my for okay, so I own a forerunner, but that's always been a dream of mine to own a yeah, forerunner. Yeah, yeah. Like it's always like my and partly my dad too. My dad's always like you know told me like I can see you driving a forerunner. Like you look the kind of guy who drives a forerunner. So like ever since I was a Your kid, dad's I'm, a good salesman, bro. He got you on, that. bro. He started working on me since I was like twelve. I was like, yeah, I think I would like a forerunner, you know. <laughs> so then when I finally got a job that allowed me to make that income to be able to pay for it, yeah, yeah, I was like, I'm getting a forerunner. I'm getting a forerunner. But now that I'm like also like, cause I'm 27 now, you know, and I'm I've been working that corporate life now for about three years now. Actually, yeah, September. Wow, so what, what what day is it? <laughs> September. What, what's today? September third yeah. bro yesterday was the three-year mark that That's i've been working crazy. at that job but um now that i've been there for three years i'm like damn i kind of want to i want more financial freedom i want more independent like you know like i want more i don't want to have to work anymore <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so that uh that car is a friendly reminder that i gotta stay in line yeah, bro you got you yeah. man or get That's a repo this. yeah or I'm get about, repo I'm about to, i mean I'm about we, to save up for a bucket bro like that Bro. bro, you could have bought it with the money you bought that 7D for. You could have bought a car. Bro. Bam. Man, Chuck's, you're telling me, bro. Just, <laughs> I'm just playing with you. Nah. Now, nah, Chuck got that car because he, he did get some, because uh, somebody hit, some guy hit him. So, they ended up paying him out. And then with that insurance money. He yeah, he got like 1100 back. So, it was like, it was like 1400 But That's since like, I got the insurance money. That's but like, it runs pretty good. Bro, it runs really good. I got a homie, though, like right around the corner. He does mechanic work. It's like, so cheap, bro. like, I'm there. And he kills it. That's and I'm like, damn. Yeah. This is tight. Yeah. But yeah, fuck debt, everybody. Don't don't live in debt, bro. Don't don't drive debt. Hell no, bro. I was in debt since I was uh since I even knew what the fuck debt was. <laughs> not, not to say fucking yeah, yeah, like yeah. in that it? situation, like in debt, like fucking uh actually fucking when I was a uh, teenager and stuff, getting locked up. But uh, I started graffiti before anything, you know. Mm -hmm. So fucking vandalizing just put me in debt. You know, just oh shit for real, yeah, bro. So fucking getting caught up, I did it like stupidly. You know, like getting it, caught up. And is shit, is so. it because of the fines? Yeah, yeah, bro. And then Damn. like like I won't say I never knew about it, but I was young, bro. So I was just getting locked up, and the fines were just stacking up. So once I hit eighteen, they hit me. I I got uh, arrested again, and then those came up and i was like bro i didn't know about this so those Why became warrants yeah, at yeah, that yeah, point bro. better get it yeah oh damn but yeah bro. What, what what kind of debt we talking i don't know how much graffiti debt or graffiti no, van charges vandalize, can be. vandalism back then was crazy bro there is was vandalizing like, a felony or no, no he's like i technically owe oh, six hundred thousand <laughs> no, no, they they charge they charge the grip, bro. But it's it's already taken care of. But I was like, that's just money that I wasted as a youth and shit. Yeah. I won't say I won't say that's my worst thing that I've done, bro. But that that kind of like structured me in, in in the place that I am now. But if if I could go back, I would not get locked up, bro. But I mean, that taught me that taught me like solitary taught me a lot, bro. You know what I mean? So, but I mean, talking about the positives now, I feel like yo, like me being here with with three years of experience, bro. I've seen a lot of people be here like longer not talking shit but it's just like i don't see i don't see like a, a build-up and shit you know like they're shooting but they're shooting consistently for years and shit and me every every month and shit i'm like bro i have to try something different or else i'm gonna get like x'd out and shit you know so i still look up to those people i mean they give me advice and shit about business and stuff like that which i never take for granted but i feel like yo like i'm I'm trying not to move too fast but i'm not trying to move too slow bro because i feel like if i move too fast i might lose like the whole vision but if i move too slow i might miss my chance and shit you know that's so, deep it's crazy bro like i look at it like that man and it's like taking photography this is like the first nine months that i took it seriously and i was just creating freely and shit you know like i shot like 30 people plus every month you know so it's like it's it, i'm i won't say i'm overworking myself but i feel like i'm just trying to find that that resource that i need and shit you know mm -hmm. which i mean recently is it's, it's been a blessing bro because i'm I'm on the verge to either like saying fuck it, dog. I'm gonna go back to working corporate or you know just priority shit, paying bills and shit. But there's just this little thing that's just telling me, bro, it's, it's soon, bro. But just you just gotta wait, bro. So I'm gonna give it to the end of the year and see. Oh, see sometimes what pops you gotta take a. Shit. So sometimes you gotta take a chance on yourself, man. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That, that's why I took a chance on that, bro. Like I literally just was like, I woke up, bro. It's gonna sound like very irresponsible, bro. But I woke up and I was like, I'm just not going to work, bro. I didn't quit. I I didn't get fired you know i just woke up and said fuck it dog i shot that same day and started shooting ever since dog so it's like it's crazy bro mm -hmm. it's crazy i mean i'm still to this point like 
even using that term, I try to use like little terms and to 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 get me into places. Like I I did a lot with less. Is just trying to use that into to a point that I was like, bro, I'm really doing a lot when I don't have nothing. But once I have once I find that nothing that I need, which is like the tools that I need to build shit, bro, it's gonna it's gonna be good, bro. I mean, yeah, I feel like a lot of people try to try like, and I've done this before too. Like they they limit themselves to create less because of what the equipment they don't have, right? Yeah, yeah. Instead yeah, of yeah, using yeah. what they have and trying to find a way to compensate, yeah, you know what I mean? Definitely, bro. Because so, like, what a lot of people don't know, bro. Like I admit it to a lot of people, but it's just it's mostly friends that I admit it to. Also, like, bro, like everybody's telling me what do I use or what how do I shoot, and it's like, bro, like up to date, most of my stuff has been raw, bro. Like little itches and stuff has has all been raw. So it's been crazy because a lot of people say. I shouldn't be shooting like that or shouldn't be like posting stuff like that. But I was like, bro, like, are you talking about like retouching? Like you don't retouch at all? No, bro. Oh, that's another question I had actually. Wait, Cause John, does John doesn't, John doesn't retouch his photos. Like he doesn't, you don't use Lightroom or Photoshop or anything like that. You just shoot straight out of camera and upload that way. You don't like, like I would say, cause fucking the tools I'm talking about again, mm -hmm. the main tools that I need is a few things that are holding me back from actually doing videos or doing like, like having shit. having a computer with yeah. a, uh, editing mm -hmm. yeah. for like for like I, I do like small edits and shit but like i can tell you straight over like 80 percent, 90 percent of my work is all raw bro it's all settings and shit mm -hmm. you know so i mean retouch i feel like now it's just like it's dope but like it's just retouching like not saying pimples and shit but like small skin things and shit you know but after that man it's just it's it's been raw bro like most of my shit's been raw bro. so you don't you don't know what frequency separation is no no okay. no that i, I want to learn bro <laughs> I i'll tell you learn. what it is i'll tell I you want to learn because i feel like that's gonna improve my photography more and shit you know yeah. but i feel like right now my main resource is instagram so i mean it's, it's gonna devalue you know if i edit and then post it on there i hate the fucking crop so i feel you shoot bigger than what Instagram shows and shit. So, I mean, right now I'm just doing it because of Instagram and that's my main resource. But I feel like once I start stepping into the website and shit, I need to definitely edit, bro. I need to definitely do all that. Like, that's a priority of shit for sure. So, so right now, when, when you when you shoot, do you ever shoot with the Instagram crop in, in mind? Like, do you, do you go, like... Now I do, bro. Because, like, back, back then, back then, like, I used to shoot, like, portraits since I was shooting with a uh, crop sensor. Like, it, it looked... It looked f like appropriate, and then when I put it to post on Instagram, it would either cut the feet off or cut like part of the head, you know, to yeah. get the full image and shit. So now it's definitely shooting for, for that crop and shit, you know. But I don't really want to put that mind state. But until till further notice, I feel like I have to, you know. How do you get the photos from your camera onto That's your a secret, bro? I can't tell you my secret, man. Everybody <laughs> knows, bro. I just want to know how you do it. Uh, I know no. there's adapters, but how do you do it? No, nah, it's uh, usually friends with laptops and just transfer it over. It's just uh, Wi-Fi compatible. Bro. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. You get one of those uh, Wi-Fi cards. No, yeah, have uh, you ever used them before? This, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the 70D is uh, Wi-Fi compatible. Oh, it has Wi-Fi mm -hmm. built in? Yeah. Noise. It's dope. I don't know. I, I feel I, I like I would not have got far if it wasn't for that camera, bro. And my sister's like, I dropped it like three times, bro. So now it's like, bro, I got to get the next move pretty soon, bro. Yeah. You, know you got to move to that Sony. Yeah. Nah, bro. That I'm gonna Sony stay, game. I'm going to stay canon, bro. I'm going to shoot film. <laughs> But Sony is is definitely like something that I want to aim for. But fucking yo, low light. It's that low light life, bro. You I remember you told me last yeah. time you don't like to shoot at night. I'm like, bro, you got a Sony, though. You got to shoot at night. I don't like, bro. I, oh, okay, let me tell you bro. why I don't like shooting at night. It's because the I like to shoot at like I'm a very technical photographer, bro. I don't like pushing my ISO past like 600. You don't got to, bro. You do though. Oh, at night, maybe. At but, night, yeah. But you just bring, especially lights. if you're shooting with a 2.8 uh, aperture lens. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not shooting on primes that has like a 1.4, 1.2, right, 1.8. Right. Uh, Bro, I used to hate shooting at night, but then like when I was working, when I was working, I w that was the only time that I can actually shoot. So I uh, I hated shooting at night because of that reason, because of light or fucking being too dark on the face and shit, you know. Yeah. And then it just became more addictive, and it's funny because a lot of people were. After I quit my job, they were like, oh, I like your night shots. I was like, yo, I hate shooting at night. But, you know, like, it's it's just dope because I, I mainly shoot downtown, bro. Like, mainly in the arts district and stuff. And I won't say you can't tell unless I post a location. But, yo, there's a lot of gems down there, bro. Oh, yeah. for sure. You know, there's wait, so, wait, so, so you, you, hit, you hit on something that's really important for people to hear. You said you don't like shooting at night, but it's the only time you were able to? Yeah, back then. Now, now it's just, bro. I love shooting in the daytime, but it was too fucking hot, bro. See, that's the thing, though, man. A lot of people like that. If they worked a job, 
and the only time they were and and you have a son too so your, your weekends weren't really like yeah, yeah, yeah. free to shoot right mm-hmm. so you had to be with your son mm-hmm. so it's like a lot of people would make that excuse and be like oh well you know i work till this time so i can't really shoot yeah. it's night no time so i don't have any i don't have any studio strobes i don't yeah. have a studio space nah, it's passion bro but you're just I like, like i feel like it's passion. i got some free time like let me go downtown and yeah. try to create something i feel like it's passion bro. could i go back on one thing though like for both of y'all like why why do you uh clean up faces and whatnot what i don't but i no, mean i feel i feel like oh, i feel what? like i feel like that's just the professionalism i feel like that's just like but you know like a uh, magazine have you ever type, seen bruce you know? gildan remember him mm-hmm. the one who did the portraits of like the the faces like he 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 did like i think it's bruce Gildan. i might be fucking up the name but mm-hmm. um he did like the new york portraits of just random people who were kind of ugly oh yeah but yeah, they yeah, had yeah very like yeah he, that, he that didn't guy edit. he but his explanation on it was like next level bro like I'm you can just see tell sure. yeah like he he takes photos of like they look he scary. literally he literally grabs like i don't want to be rude but he takes the most unique looking people that just have like either the weirdest shapes or expressions or they look homeless or they just yeah, have really yeah, yeah, textured yeah. skin and he'll just grab them and he'll just snap their portrait like but on a subway it's like, so crazy he literally thinks it's beautiful like you can just tell the, yeah. like, the genuine like, yeah. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, this yeah. is beautiful like it this literally makes him so like, happy damn. bro. damn like you that's deep. I mean? Like that's, that's crazy, so bro. deep. I'll and show you one of his photos right and, now. And he and he, he he doesn't retouch. He doesn't like to that's edit. Things I mean, out. I feel like I don't I don't know why people retouch touching on that base, but I feel like that's just the professionalism. Like magazines and shit. You see magazines, bro. It's hella retouched. You know. Yeah. You know, just hella edited. But why do you do it, Kim? Does it bother you? Do you think? Because are you more focused on how they're posed or do you just clarity, don't like man. it on their that face quality, bro. I, I just like that quality bro, quality, I, I'm a, bro. like i said before on on podcasts is i'm a pixel peeper yeah i like to zoom in yeah, yeah. i like to zoom in yeah okay. you see that photo right there yeah that's, yeah that's what's his name uh it says um bruce gilden bruce gilden yeah so most of his work is just like that like that's literally dope, just bro. the face um that's that raw feel but going going back to what i was talking about uh, for why i like retouching is because i feel like uh <sighs> I think it's primarily because of who I learned from too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the photographer that I learned from that I kind of that got me got me interested in photography and studio photography. He did a ton of retouching. That's um, true, bro. He kind of went a little bit overboard with it. Like he would literally spend three hours on one photo, yeah, 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 doing the like the cleanup of the skin, the hair, reshaping the hair, uh, throwing the high pass filter on there, going between Lightroom and Photoshop back and forth all the time. And I kind of took a little bit of that, and I was like, okay, well, maybe it's best. Because the thing is, like, why do women like like makeup, right? Yeah. Women like makeup because it covers up their flaws. So why can't we be, why can't we as photographers be that second filter to be able to improve whatever was missed that day? You know, like maybe they did have their makeup on, but there's just that one spot that that it or they shows had a up pimple. there. Yeah. What? Why? And it it gets into a gray area because then it gets me thinking like. Who are we to change who they are, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if, what if I get rid of something that she wanted there? You know what I mean? Like you just don't know. It's a it's a gray area, but I just like that clean feel. Mm-hmm. And I haven't had anybody complain uh, yet. So I mean, maybe one day. Like I don't know. May, may, I, I like freckles. Freckles are cool. Freckles are. Th- um, lit. I like yeah. Freckles are very natural, and I would never remove freckles. But there are sometimes with birthmarks or whatever. Like if it's not that big of a deal, like I'll just remove it. <laughs> it's like a pet peeve of mine. Yeah, but, I, yeah, but it's but the thing is too like I've also made that a part of my workflow yeah, where yeah, I don't yeah. I don't see myself doing photos unless I do that. But then I, man, but but I've been thinking lately, bro. Like, and I I told you this about just about just ditching the whole camera game and just shooting portrait mode on my phone. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like just oh, kind of doing that's crazy, yeah. just kind of doing that because I, I was literally just fucking it with it now, and I was like, damn, this is kind of dope. Clear, like, bro. yeah, the ten. Yeah, That's just bananas. But then, but then I'm also like, okay, so what if I just take, what if I just take the whole game of photography and flip it, where it's like, because you know everybody nowadays is like, oh, I shoot raw, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's like, you gotta shoot raw. Like, why do you shoot a raw? A lot of people I know edit though, bro. That I, that I met. They That's the thing like is because crazy, they edit, right? Yeah. So what if you take the edit out of it? What if you try to capture? What if you try to make digital straight out the camera, like film, where it's like you don't really mess with it that much, right? You you shoot it the way it is, and that's what it is. So like, what if you take these cameras that are like, you know, you know, they have all these capabilities of shooting raw, but then you shoot like the lowest quality JPEG. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. that's that's the way you shoot. I think. And I, do do you think that would make you a better photographer at the end of the day? Because then you're not so much relying on the retouching. Because a lot of people, bro. 
I think there's a lot of photo- great photographers, but I think they ruin their shots when they the edit, edit them. Yeah. They make them too something. And the, and, and it's all personal opinion. That, yeah, it's all personal opinion because well. to them, it may be like, yo, that's exactly what I was going for. I wanted the Game of Thrones poster feel. Because some people hate that faded look. You know? I fucking love that shit. I'm like... Oh, you yeah, mean yeah, the, I don't, when you raise the blacks? <laughs> that little curve. Yeah. Like, it, I think I like that. I like that feeling. I like... Because um, we... They got a Nishiki for um Commonwealth, the, yeah, the yeah, four yeah, camera yeah, thing. Bro, like, I was just looking at the photos, you know, because I was editing them. Like, making them into the GIFs. Bro, there's, it looks so tight. I it's don't so know so why that film look... Like, like I'm a sucker back, for it, bro. like forever, like forever. Even disposable cameras look dope yeah, to me. Yeah, Something sure. about like it has like a really gritty fucking look to yeah. it, and maybe it's just because I have seen like usually it's like new girls and shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. it's like still like when you do it right, it looks tight. It, feels, it really yeah. does look no, tight, you know. Bro. And I think that's the one thing like we should all do one day. And we were talking about with uh, C Flyway is do challenges. Like, no, yeah, okay, bro. only shoot with your phone or only use one like office depot light or some yeah, shit like yeah, that yeah. and challenge people and be like yeah let's see really see what you can do because like this ain't new yeah like i've seen no, people do it but definitely. like use the most bare minimum thing and see what you can do with it and i think it'd be kind of interesting because you're like because i used to do that commonwealth i was like i'm only using one lens tonight i'm not yeah, gonna yeah, you know yeah. what i mean like yo i feel like this is what you should do with your insta meets bro yeah bro you, sh- you, you should uh set up a, a a competition not a competition but like a showcase yeah with it and be like okay guys for this month's uh portrait vibe meetup i want you to show up with a photo that you took in this month and i wanted to have this item in it i want you to have this color and I want you to show a street sign or something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and, and then yeah. and then outside of that, you can do whatever you want. But you have to have those three things. You know what I mean? Like something like it's that. It's like oh, the 48-hour yeah. film festival yeah. where they have like three different genres. So that it's like romantic comedy. Yeah. Have you? Well, first of all, have you ever heard of the 48-hour film festival? No, that sounds like a 48-hour film festival or film project. I guess. Yeah, something like uh, that. Sorry. They they it's a thing in Vegas. Well, they do it all over the all over the world. But they basically uh, have this thing where you show up with your team of people, which is your videography team. Yeah, yeah. You can yeah. have actors, you can have models, you can have people who re- only it can edit, be two of you. Shoot. It can be it can be uh, yeah. Of you. We did it when, when when we did it. It was you, me, Fernando, Patrick, and then so Javier like six and that people. other girl. Yeah, so it was like it was like six people, six of us. But we you so you, you're literally giving forty given forty eight hours to write a short film, uh, shoot it, and edit it. That's dope. So you start off Friday night at like 7 p.m. I think it is, and you have to have your film turned in, in on a USB drive by like 7 p.m. Sunday. Yeah, 48 hours. So that's crazy. So we literally went like almost 48 hours without sleep because yeah. we, we had to. We had to. Yeah. That's dope though. That's, but that's but but the thing but the rules of the of the project is you have to shoot it in. They 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 that way you can't cheat or have your film already written before then. They give you a topic of what your film has to be about or like a genre. They give you a an character name, an too. object, and then a line that you have to incorporate into your film. That's dope. So it kind of you know flips it upside down. That's dope. Yeah. That's yeah. Dope. And you have to use like you know that's, all that's original music an and all though. that shit. Oh yeah, yeah bro. It, we learned though. so much, like just how to work with each other, yeah. work with actors. Even though it's not the greatest thing, it 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 teaches you a lot. And I think that's the one thing. Like if you did that with like the instrument, yeah, that's what I'm trying to do, man. Because it's like I won't say it's bad, bro, but. I was I won't say I was running out of ideas, but everything was the same, bro. Like I was just meeting up and then people were just shooting and stuff. Um, yesterday being one that we haven't done like in four or five months. I think you went to the panel discussion, right? Uh, King. The panel discussion? Yeah, in April. I might have. Yeah, I think I saw you there. I remember. Oh, but I want to do uh, I want to do different stuff, bro. Like the panel discussion. I saw panel discussions on YouTube. Before. What's that exactly? Have you seen panel discussions no. on on YouTube, bro? See them; they're boring as fuck, bro. <laughs> they're like they're like an hour, two hours long, and they're just talking about just random stuff. But I got the idea off of that, and I did a panel discussion. It was basically uh, interviewing like eight creatives, and basically uh, uh, on the stage, and then there was an audience, you know, just basically interviewing them and just trying to figure out. And that was the first time I did that, bro. So I mean, it was a dope turnout. I'm gonna try to do another one uh next month. Did you have like their photos show? like posted on like a projector or something behind them? The no, that's about? that's what we fucking that was that's what I want to do. Like, oh, like for sure, projector for... shit. But it was like it was anywhere from like a photographer, creative and anything, bro. Like a makeup artist and shit like that. So um 
even yesterday uh yesterday we were doing uh the release of the majority which is a uh, a newsletter from here so basically we're trying to focus that and that's what the instant me was yesterday's uh i'm trying to figure out what to do exactly with it bro you didn't really explain that it research. that well bro it's, it's no, what, he the, did. what no the, what the majority is oh well, yeah. that's, 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 panel. That's, yeah. that's 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 a newsletter i mean that's uh basically what i was trying to do is like focus on a creator for the night say say for example like i told you like maybe hosting an instant meet for morning dinner so people can be aware what it is you know and if mm. i can use instant meet as a resource i mean i won't say that's that's my biggest resource but a lot of people that either from facebook or like people old elder people that have been doing it for years or people that don't even follow us bro follow instant meet and it's just like fucking uh it's not big bro but i feel like i got a lot of like actual artistic support on it so i mean even doing something for this like yesterday when we did that we we're focusing on her release and the release of the website the release of the newsletter um and basically the she was just talking about it at the meet and showcasing uh a few of her pieces and shit you know so that's yeah. what i want to do with instant me as well uh focus on creators for the night and just use that as a resource but still get creative you know that's stupid so stupid fucking though. um even i like with, that idea even what you guys mm -hmm. brought out right now that's i'm gonna take that in consideration bro because like I'm I'm not gonna say I need direction, but I do need direction when I go into an event. Otherwise, we're just chilling, you know. Yeah. It's always good to just be open and like, you know, try new things. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. But out. fucking, it's crazy, bro. Because like me running fifty plus people is like, what what am I directing? What I'm just telling you to meet up here and just yeah get get to places. And there needs to be you know? some kind of agenda. Hey, Chuck, yeah. can, can you let Rosemary in real quick? Yeah, yeah. I, I think she's, I think she's outside skirt. waiting. All right, hold on. Yeah. Um, who's gonna be speaking? Next question. Uh, so I can put the camera put, just on Just put it on him and ask him a question real quick. All right. Yeah. Skirt. Um, so real quick, John, how do you, because I see your Instagram, man. You you put, you put take a lot of photos of a lot of people. Where do you find these people, like, primarily? Instagram. You find them through Instagram? Yeah, Instagram, bro. Like, fucking, Instagram, I feel like, is the biggest biggest platform and shit. Um, most of the f women that I get is Instagram. Some of the clientele, that's, that's my biggest clientele, bro, other than fucking facebook but i don't really get on facebook you know do you have a website i'm working on it bro this, mm. is, the, this is the first year that i actually took it serious so fucking that's that's my next move actually trying to figure out what i can do with it like port survive was going to be the the main thing i was trying to do you know port and stuff but yeah that's just a featured thing i'm gonna turn it into like a what is it a portrait uh service thing too as well to, mm. like you can book photographers through port survive i still like that. portrait vibe being your your, but portrait vibe is your thing though that's, that's just the name you know that name bro, is you should get t-shirts done mm, no that's, i'm gonna try to do a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do propaganda pretty soon for portrait vibe i'm trying to do like big ass wet paste with portraits and just stick them around the city and shit a, a, a big ass what like uh wet paste have you seen wet paste web page paste paste pa web have you seen wet paste Chuck? Like uh, wheat paste. Oh yeah, wheat paste posters and yeah, stuff. Yeah, like yeah. where you can like put on the wall and yeah, then like they yeah, do the roller. Bro. Oh yeah, so yeah. I want to do propaganda like that. Like actually, like have portraits that I shot and just have like randomly in the city and shit. But under portrait vibe and shit. Damn, that's G. Be, can you get in trouble for that? Possibly. I mean, it's wheat paste though. So I mean, it, like <laughs> it's it, vandalism, I guess, depending where you put it. it but is no, it's one thing. I think you can use like an organic one, so they can't get oh, mad yeah, at yeah, you. Yeah, where yeah. like takes off the rain will just like drain it out over time. So it's not really because like I think if it's permanent, that's when they'll. No, nah, I'm gonna do a permanent. Bro. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> no, no, he's not. I'm gonna he's not sure. gonna. I'm gonna nah, make sure bro. He stays there. Don't no, go back to your ways. Not, yeah, he's not no, gonna. Not it. I mean, <laughs> it, it'd be dope, bro. Because like, just imagine seeing just a random portrait. Yeah, I've always been the in decline shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, uh, lit, bro. Bro, I remember the big ass things they used to do. Yeah, I was like, Whoa, that, it's it's like something to look at, bro. I mean, doing something with portraits would be dope. That shit would be super tight. It'd be different. It'd be deep. It'd be different too. Do some Banksy stuff too with some of the portraits, like make yeah, it like bro. super. Bro, how do you get into events, bro? I'm trying to get into events. Next, Me, bro. Yeah. Um, I've been doing events like for a almost minute, my like yeah. whole life. Chuck, like, Chuck, know. got to do something strange for a little piece of change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were waiting for. He's got to gotta say give that. up some ass <laughs> for that free pass. Yeah, you know what exactly. I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. No, it's gonna be a don shit. The events are, are lit, bro. Like I've been trying to do a like actually events like Life is Beautiful or fucking Rolling Loud or just something random and shit. Yeah, yeah. I think we, we talked to us. Who do we talk to about that? That does a lot of events. Hmm? We were talking to somebody on the podcast. I can't remember, but they were talking about how they basically you basically represent a media outlet. Yeah, right. Or yeah. you, uh, or you work for a company that that is that a part of all that. Shit. Who was it that we talked to, bro? We talked to so many people. Bro, Rob Machado was the only one we were talking about the press pass. Oh whatnot, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it might it might have been Rob. Yeah, I don't think he does Rob festivals. No, but he does like Life is Beautiful or no, he does a. Uh, no, he's talking. 
Are you, you talking about EDC? to do Life is Beautiful as a photographer and whatnot? No, like events in general. Bro. Or just doing hosting one. Bro, like just show up with your camera. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Bro. You, you know, you know what we should do? This is what we should do, bro. We should just go on the computer. We make up our own our own fake badge, like press pass. It just oh, says media like, pass or like, photography pass or whatever. Yeah. Put your name, your logo, a fake website. It doesn't go anywhere because no one can click on it because it's a badge. A lot of people do that. That's just and crazy. Then just go, yeah. When it, people got into Ultra and stuff, I was like, damn, that's kind of tight. Like, or the man. McGregor. Like, yeah, the guy yeah. was, like, the videographer for, Mc, for McGregor. I was like, damn, that's crazy. That's ballsy, though, at the same time. Because I don't know, like, can you get, like, super in trouble for that? I don't know. Because that's almost, like... That shows you how close, like if if you're a big person, somebody wants to kill you, you can probably get near you pretty easily <laughs> too. At the same, that's why it scared me. I was like, I don't know if that's a good thing to do. That'd be that'd be interesting. You know what I mean? The yeah. Ultra one's cool and shit, but I mean, that's fucked, dude. Like yeah. he got right near McGregor. Yeah. And that's nobody true. knew. Yeah. Unless that was all a setup. Nah, I'm pretty sure it was fake. He showed the whole process of it too. If it was fake, it was a pretty well done video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So just to to wrap up the podcast real quick, because I think Your, we're we're hitting our hour mark uh, right about yeah. now. They said thirty minutes. We stayed thirty minutes talking. That's hey. Like, <laughs> okay. So last question was uh. I see you do post a lot because I have my post notifications turned on for your feed, up, bro. bro. You do. I got my post notifications turned on for you. You post like at least once every other day. I try. I try to post like once a day, but sometimes like I post more on my stories now because not to say in a creepy wise, but people are watching you more than they support you, bro. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You know. Hey, hey, that's true. It's it's a scary 100%. fact. One hundred percent. Uh, and I won't say Instagram, but social media is a very interesting thing. Like people take that shit to heart sometimes. And yeah, me, I, I mean, I don't post as much, but I have like. I have a lot of work I haven't released, bro. You yeah. Know, I have a lot of work I have Like, some of the stuff that I've been posting now is fucking beginning of the year, last year, bro. Yeah. You know, so pe- people don't know that, but they're like, I like your new work. I'm like, I'm not going to say it's old work. Yeah. But it's old work, you know. Um, well, then here's kind of what I was going for yeah, yeah, with, yeah. With, with my question is, uh, do you believe in quantity over quality or Both. which one over the other? Both. Both? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm working on quality more. Like, I've, I've learned how to adjust my settings and all that. Until I start editing, I feel like my quality is going to better. But, I mean, I still got to give quantity, bro. I mean, I always try to challenge myself to shoot 30 people a month, like, at least once a day. Mm-hmm. It, even that, man. Even, like, the most that I shot, bro, not a, even saying the bragging right, but I shot, it was 54, 60 people in a week. You know? And Damn, that's, that's a bro. Week. And in that's a week? Di- and that's different different portraits. I haven't even shot that's three people going. in this whole entire year. Bro. I'm, I'm going gonna, gonna, to do videos, bro. I want to <laughs> do videos. like that's I'm going to beat your record, bro. Month. Try it. I, I'm gonna I go on this trip and just bro. shoot a hundred people I challenge <laughs> with my camera. Bro. With I, my camera, I shot six thousand people today. <laughs> like, no, uh, at the beginning of the year, I had I had this portrait vibe challenge. Uh, it was basically trying to shoot three hundred sixty five people in a year, which is basically one person a year. Yeah. Uh, I haven't looked to date, bro. But last time I checked was in June, and I was already at two hundred. So I was like, I'm halfway there, bro. Well, and 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 it's not it's not sh- uh, portraits. Like say I can shoot you twice. It's different people, like three hundred sixty five different people. Damn. You know, it's it's a lot of people, but I mean it's capable. That's hard to do because you, no, even bro. if you even if you plan it ahead of time, there's bound to be somebody who flakes. Yeah, but so you'd have to have more like seven hundred and sixty people in nah, case somebody trust, flakes bro, each time. Trust. Now sometimes I overwork myself, bro. Shoot like five people a day and there I'm I'm up. You know, but just challenge yourself, bro. I challenge everybody. Everybody's inspirational. You guys are inspiration. I mean I that's my biggest advice to everybody. Just find inspiration in everything, bro. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? 100%. Just, Instagram is, is is a big platform, but I want to take that shit too hard, bro, because, like, I, I don't have a lot of followers. I don't have a lot of likes. I don't have a lot of shit, but I, I shoot more than a lot of people. And like you said, quantity over quality. I feel like right now I'm just doing quantity. Yeah. You know, over quality, but I feel like even those people... But you're practicing have, your yeah, craft bro, to get so. to that level of quality you know what I mean? to where you're like, okay, this is what I love shooting, yeah. and this is the level of quality I want for it, right? Yeah. Cause I found my love for porches and stuff, and I feel like I adapted it. But now it's like videos is is the only thing I really want to do now, bro. Like that's the next thing I want to. That's the next thing on my list, bro. Mm-hmm. Videos another realm. Yeah, oh, shit. Bro, I haven't oh, even yeah. started to be honest. Bro, <laughs> that's how I feel. Like when I'm comparing myself to some of the big ups, like yeah, big yeah. wigs, like nah, I don't know shit. No, but low key, bro. Like not not saying bad, but like I see you guys, bro. Like a lot of people see you guys and support you guys, but it's like, bro, I see Chuck and he's not even online, bro. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I see you and you you do post online but like you even admitted recently that you started porches bro i won't say you're better than a lot of these people that have been doing it for years but you just you just got the eye for it you just got the passion for it you know what i mean like regardless of the situation bro like i feel like a lot of us are are in a position to do a lot more bro i feel like i feel like one of my biggest weaknesses is like networking 
It I is. Don't, I don't go out. I don't go out enough. Oh yeah, no, you definitely, know what I mean? bro. Definitely, because so, I, I even got that in the past, bro. Like they're like, how do you, how do you shoot so many people, bro? That's the hardest part about here is reaching out. But no offense. Reaching out. Damn, I don't want to say this. I just don't feel like networking out here is like. I don't know. I feel like in LA, like if you network oh, in LA, no, definitely. like your connects will, you know, branch cool. out way faster. But out here, everybody's very everybody's tricky. out for themselves. Yeah, yeah. You think like a hundred percent? And I, I get it. It's, I heard that shit yesterday. Bro. It's it's so, it's, it's like, the game. Yeah. Like you know what I mean. And if that's how they want to play the game, like that's cool. But I'm telling you, like I feel like Vegas is barely growing in culture. So I mean, I feel like that's just a part of yeah the growth and shit, bro. I mean. Yeah, once again, it's it's still baby form. Yeah, it's there, right. Hopefully, it gets. Really hopefully, no. it's not like that forever, bro. I mean, technically, I mean, you're the one who runs the insta meets, so yeah, that's, yeah. you're kind of the head ones. So yeah, everybody's yeah, gonna yeah. go for you. For it's crazy, you know bro. what I mean? It's crazy. It's crazy even realizing that, you know. And then just bringing that back yesterday and trying to turn this into a business, bro. It's like it finally hit me. It's either I want to go back to work, which you know, it's, it's an easy option, or else just like find this passion, which it's kind of worked out, bro. And another interesting secret, bro. I'm like half blind, bro. So that's my that's my main that's what do you mean you're half blind like from the like, peripherals yeah my yeah, peripherals yeah, yeah. bro like i don't see i don't see straightforward with this uh, you know so really i feel like that's that's my damn i see like you guys understand more with a with a i, I compare it to like a 50 or like a prime yeah. range 1.8 like i see 1.8 the back of it you know what i mean like the bokeh <laughs> effect and shit so it's dope bro i feel like that's that's my little secret and shit but i feel like that's that's helped me out a lot bro. damn that's crazy you know what i mean dude wait but can you see what's in front of you yeah like, can you see it, like, clearly, though, or do you need glasses? No, I can see clearly, bro. You can see clearly? No, is but is your it, peripheral? But once, once I'm like this, bro, I can't, I can see the bokeh effect of you guys, you know what I mean? Oh, I can't okay. see you clearly. I see what you're see saying. It. Yeah. It's crazy, Dang. bro. It's crazy. It's, 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 I, I'm, I'm going to take that as a blessing, you know, because, like, yeah. I, I can't take it for granted. You're literally like, seeing life differently as a yeah. lot of other people. Yeah. And it's crazy. Like, everybody sees life completely different. Yeah. You don't know what I'm seeing right now. Yeah. I don't know what you're seeing. I think we you're looking, all- at, you're, you're seeing me and John because you got a lazy eye. Oh yeah, my <laughs> no, that, I got a lazy <laughs> lid, bro. That, that's a blessing with what we do. We can we can show anybody what we see in our eyes, bro. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean that's our biggest blessing. I feel like, you know, more this, power this to you, it. man. Keep yeah. on creating, bro. Oh, yeah, life. good shit, sir. Vibe, that's vibe. a that's a good place to. Uh, damn, we didn't even get into the whole vibe thing, but vibe, I think we're running out of time. That's the word. We're gonna have to have you on for episode one hundred and twenty-five. This time, yeah, Kimo wake up early, and hey, bro. I'm just kidding. Hey, bro. Hey, I should put. It's my it's my today's Labor Day or Memorial Day. Yeah, Labor, yeah. What is La- Labor Day? Labor Day is um, it's for work, right? It's a, yeah, it's for a, all the it, people who work too damn hard in this. Well, shout country. out to us for being here, know. bro. <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to mess up the definition of Labor Day, so I'm just gonna sit this one out. Don't sleep eight hours. <laughs> don't sleep eight hours is the motto, bro. Everybody in here has had less than six hours of sleep, so twenty four hours there a day, go. bro. Thank you for being on, man. Thank you, yeah, brother. Appreciate you. We appreciate guys. it. Appreciate you guys. And for everybody who t- tuning Pleasure. into the uh, audio version, uh, we'll go ahead and post all of uh, John's information in the description uh, information area for the podcast and on YouTube. Um, I think it's time to sign out. Yeah. Thank so you guys for tuning time. in, and we'll catch you guys on the next morning yes, dinner. Sir. Love y'all. There's definitely a vibe. Every time I come in the kitchen, you in the kitchen, in the goddamn refrigerator. I sure am hungry.